Hey, I'm Ash T, and on today's episode of The Dropouts, I have a very interesting guest and story. So I don't know this person in real life. He reached out to me on The Dropouts channel and said, uh, hey, I've got this story as well. And I thought, huh, that's really cool. Well, let's just put you on and see what happens on the show. His name's Alan Johnson. He's a good friend of Johnny Ray Diaz. Uh, hey, Alan. How you doing? First time we're meeting. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm excited. I'm excited too. I'm a little jealous that your voice is deeper than mine. Uh, oh, so man. I get that all the time. I was with the, I had this voice at eight years old. So eight years old, you no were talking joke. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was weird. It was weird. <laughs> it bothered me a little bit, and then I grew into it, and everybody was like. And then puberty, it got deeper. Yeah, even deeper. Yeah. even deeper. Been hearing all the time. You should do radio. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I want to hear about your background growing up. Uh, tell me a little bit about what your family did. What were the f values they instilled in you? Yeah, yeah. What were your dreams growing up? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, originally from Chicago, Illinois. Um, family values, just work hard. Uh, my mom, my dad, especially my dad would always just say, read books, read, read as many books as you can. My mom, her values are just work hard and clean your room. And stay on top of it, you know what I mean? That, Do you still clean your room? I, I'm a very, I'm a clean freak. I'm okay. a clean, thanks to her, I'm a bit of a clean freak. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that she was focused on and my dad was focused on. And What, what were their uh, jobs? Oh, my mom, oh, my dad had tons of jobs, kind of like me. My mm -hmm. mom, uh, she did a lot of uh, steel mill type work, work in factories and stuff like that. Um, before that, she was an act actress also. Right? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And she actually quit that, ended up having me and my siblings or whatnot. And then my dad, he worked as a contractor for a little bit, and then he went to Ringling Brothers Barnum Bailey Circus. So we got two entertainers. He, in the well, he actually, well, he was just in the concession stands. He oh, worked for okay, the company. Gotcha. He wasn't really in the entertainment. Granted, he's a funny guy himself. Um, so he worked in popcorn, cotton candy, in the seats. You know how the guys yelling, now, popcorn, popcorn, get your popcorn. That was my dad. Okay. That oh, was my dad. Right. I think yeah. I got popcorn from him one time. You probably <laughs> did. You probably did. She was probably salty, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what my mom and my dad did. And uh, my mom kind of still does that. She She's more into the uh, uh, in the hospital uh, area now, just doing, like, clerical work and stuff like that now. So she's still out there, uh, you know, getting along, getting it done. Doing the work. Doing the work, man. Doing the work. And what did you want to be when you were a child? Like your earliest memory, four, five, six. Mm. Or was there was there an age where you thought, this is, you know, we all have dreams growing up, right? I yeah. want to be an astronaut. I want to be a fireman. Anything come None up of like that? that? None of None that. None of that. I, well, let me say this. My mom wanted me to be a chief surgeon. So a part of me was kind of like, all right, I'll do it. I'll try that. And a, I, a chief surgeon? Yeah. Like a chief of surgery. A chief of surgery. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. She wanted, wanted me to be a doctor. All right. Yeah. I was, I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll do it. And I was not. So I had undiagnosed ADHD. Mm. I'm, I could not focus in school. And, and so I didn't have the grades or anything like that. I was just too focused on uh, TV, what was on TV, uh, uh making people laugh in class, being a class clown, that was me. So I couldn't, I couldn't focus and, and I couldn't, I just, it wasn't for me. It wasn't the understanding and reading and comprehending and all that. So nah, it was not gonna work for me to be a pre chief surgeon. <laughs> yeah, and so I, early yeah, on, was, you knew, yeah, okay, early this on, is probably like, not gonna work not for gonna me. Work. And I know you gotta be good at math and I was terrible at math. So no, no, not gonna work for me. Was that very stressful for you when you were like, uh, oh. This is what my mom wants to be, but I don't think I'm going to be able to fulfill that and make her proud. Not really, because she didn't press on it, but she uh, would always throw it out there. You should be a chief surgeon. You should be a chief surgeon. Okay, I'm like, okay. Yeah, we'll see. And then, you know, as I got older, it's like, no, that's not going to work for me. That's yeah. not going to work. And I think I kind of got into uh, dancing when I got turned like eight, nine. So I was, I wanted to be a dancer at one point, hip hop dancer. That didn't last long. Mm. And then I got older, and I. Uh, you know, I think, oh, I got it to art. So I do art also. I can sketch, draw, all that stuff, paint. That's when the art came in, and I kind of got into art and painting and creating little things and drawing and creating other people's faces, creating my own superheroes and stuff like that. So as I got older, I wanted to be one of the best artists that would ever live. Oh, well, about what age were you when you felt like that? Nine, 10, 11. Okay. Yeah. So that is yep. your dream. That is. That was your dream. That was the of dream. Of being an artist, a sketch yep. artist. A sketch artist. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got, I got 
better at it as I got older, but I didn't put in the work to get even better. Is when again it goes back to just me not being focused. Mm. I think uh, my mom wanted me to put put me on those Ritalin pills, yeah, because I couldn't focus or whatnot. But she didn't. She, yeah, I'm kind of glad she. I don't know. Part of me wish she did. Part of me wish she didn't. I'm just curious how I would have turned out if I was on those pills. It's weird. No, I'm good. Might have <laughs> been a might have been a surgeon. You never know, right? <laughs> I would have been a surgeon, but. Uh, you know, I was always just self-taught with everything when it comes to art. So, you know, I did a little bit of the art and I did a you know, little bit of the uh, the sketching and the painting. And then I kind of fell out of that also. So, All right. So you um, are getting to the age where you're going to choose a college, right? And uh, what happened there? College. Well, high school was cool. Uh, Cause I, me and my, you know, friends, we did a dance group, and you know, we would do like little sketches, and uh, we would do sketches before we go on stage to do the, the dance competition. So, like um, humor sketches. Yeah, humor sketches okay. and whatnot. That's when the 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 performing arts started ah. kicking in, and so we went on stage a few times, made the crowd laugh. Everybody loved us. We would get off stage, girls would be coming up to us, asking us out. We were pretty popular. That's right the now. best part. That of was the, the best yeah. part. It was the best part. <laughs> Being known for you know yeah. the dance group and the, the funny sketches and whatnot. Um, did your mom uh, see you perform? She did. She really enjoyed the performances. She was a very supportive mom. She didn't as long as I wasn't in jail or locked up or in prison. She she was supportive of whatever I wanted to do. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. So oh, she that's wanted, great. Yeah. So she that's great. wanted me to, uh, to be a chief of surgeon. A surgery, but as soon as you find your other passions, she, she was, was supportive all for of it. that. She was all for. How about your dad? Uh, he he, another one. He was very supportive as long as I read books, studied, and put all the put the effort into what I really wanted to do. He was behind it. So I had a great support system. That's great. It's, you don't hear that all the time. You no, know, you know, you hear people. I never parents, hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you hear parents and they're just like, "No, you need to get an education." Yeah. Da, da, da. It, it just sometimes it's just not for everyone. But luckily, I had the right parents behind me, and that's what you know. Part of the reason it pushes me to keep going, mm. you know. So yeah. And so, uh, did you want to go to a performing arts school for college? I did, but I didn't know at that time uh, that you could get Make a degree. Money. Oh. In performing arts. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, it bothers me to this day that I could have looked up. And went to the school, uh, Yale School of Drama. Right. I had no idea about it when mm, I was in college. So I didn't either. Right. So the only thing I knew about there was a couple classes and uh, the uh, the uh, university I, I was going to. Yeah. Which one was that? Uh, community College in Mesa, Arizona. Mesa oh, okay. Community gotcha. College. They had a couple acting classes that I dabbled in, and that was the extent of me knowing what you can do and what you can get a degree in in performing arts. So I was like, okay, cool. I can take some classes or whatnot. And, uh, I so did the I, same. I, I, I tell people I took one class, I got an A minus, and then I got discouraged <laughs> from acting for a while. <laughs> yes, that's pretty much how. That, I mean, mine was, it wasn't exactly like that, but I took a couple classes. It was just like, oh, okay, this is cool. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. And, and what was the moment for you where you said, I, I, but I need to make money? Right. Is that. And then you need to get a degree. And what did you? What did I you do? never, I never was the guy that wanted to get a degree. Oh, okay. I never. I was just like sc school wasn't for me. Right. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I knew, uh, at that moment, I was going to be the either a an entrepreneur or a performer of some sort, which they go hand in hand, actually, Yeah. Uh, when you're working for yourself. So it was one of the two. I started out doing the entrepreneur thing and dabbling in the, to the acting thing. I was creating, designing shirts. Uh, I kind of cranked it up with my uh, art. Oh, this, was this in college? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I started uh, designing shirts and I still kind of did the dancing thing. So I would design shirts for my for our dance group, create shirts, pants, and d even design shoes. I would paint the shoes and all that. And that got tiring. Um, creating multiple shirts and pants and for a whole dance group, mm. that shit took a toll on me. Um, so I got annoyed with that and stopped. I kind of stopped with that, but I kind of just dabbled and made stuff for myself and then wore it out to clubs and stuff like that. Every now and then people would be like, oh, can you make me this, maybe that's so why I did it. But I, it just didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me. So that's when uh, I'm wiping my eye because it's freaking itching. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's when I kind of just I kind of just started dabbling more into the performing and the arts. I was already a movie buff. I have a big ass movie collection at home. My dad had me watching movies when I was young, 
first movie I ever watched was uh, Big Trouble in Little China, mm. which actually came out in 1986 in July. Yeah. My move, uh, my mm-hmm. birthday is in July. That movie came out three, two to three weeks before I was born, and that was the first movie I saw. I remember it to this day. So, um, that was already, the first movie you saw first ever? First movie ever. Wow. Yeah. Ever. After that was. Wait, how months. old were you? I, so the movie came out in 1986. I saw it in 1988. For the first time, clearly, if I, if I saw it in nineteen eighty six, I probably don't remember. But I know <laughs> okay, for a fact okay. I saw it in nineteen eighty. All right, so this is okay. So I thought this was in college that you. I kind of went back. I kind of okay, went back. Yeah, right. I kind of went back because this all goes into how I kind of got into the performing arts and just fell in love with film because of the because of the movies my dad brought me up on. I see. My dad's a big movie buff. Also. I see. Yeah, um, so that led that started the whole like, damn, like, how did this guy? I think it was Patrick Swayze was the lead I should know but I don't know I'm pretty positive patch I'm tr- I get him and Kurt. Lee you I get know? no it's, it's either him or Kurt Russell okay Kurt Russell all right um I get them two mixed up a lot because they look alike for some reason yeah um and uh when I saw Kurt Russell I was like damn how did he get in this movie like how do you I didn't even know how to start getting into acting I was two three years old like, how did this man get into a movie so fast forward to me being back in college um that's when I kind of started taking the, you know, I was taking the classes and I was just uh, dabbling, trying to figure out if this is something I really want to do. I had the support of my mom, had the support of my dad, but I didn't know how to navigate my life, make money. I wasn't too worried about money, I'll say that, because I was still living with my mom, um, rent free, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't have to worry about the money uh, part until 2009 when we lost the house. Oh. and uh, but but take me back. Did you did you get your gr- degree in community college? No. Okay. I no. All I did was take a few classes, and then I ended up just stopped going to school, and I started pursuing acting, looking for acting gigs, just trying to see if this is something I really could make a career into. So how did you survive during that time? Uh, I was at that time I was living with my mom, so I didn't really have to make a lot of money so I was doing a job I was working at um Sears Teleservice mm, no okay. Sears sales and then I transferred to the Teleservice because I got I switched jobs a lot what did so, you th- oh what did you think about that job the first one was Sears while selling TVs buying TVs this was when all the flat screens came out 2006 from there I went to Sears Teleservice uh it's a call center call centers are cool I met a lot of women that was that's the best part <laughs> about it uh um um it made some decent money. I don't think I was getting paid. I thought it was a lot at that time. I was getting paid like twelve dollars an hour. It's actually a lot in two thousand six. Yeah, two thousand. That's actually a lot of money. It was. Um, not with current inflation. But exactly but. right. You could not survive off that now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that playing around with that and working at that job, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was cool. Met a lot of people. Met a lot of uh, women. Um. Were, so I didn't were have. Were you ever on track where you're like, okay, I could do this job for a long time? No. No. Oh. No. So you didn't like it? No. It just paid the it just paid the little bit of bills I had, which is the one cell phone bill that I had, which is for T Mobile, who I'm still with by the way. Shout out to T Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, that was the only bill. I really didn't get to the struggle part until we lost the house. That's that's when everything hit the fan. So when we lost the house, this was two thousand and nine. I had worked at Sears, Sears Teleservice. From there, from Sears Teleservice, I got fired because I couldn't stand it. I was, you know, distracted so much I couldn't mm-hmm. figure out what I really wanted to do I was now still dabbling to the acting thing um, from there I went to Dish Network I was kind of into this electronic thing big into that uh, from Dish Network I after that I got fired because <laughs> I was late all the damn time uh, <laughs> it's embarrassing <laughs> uh, from there I went to I forgot Safe Flight Auto Glass so when I started at Safe Flight we were still living in the house my mom lost the house I didn't have the opportunity to like, hey, I'm gonna move out and find me a place, mom, it's that time. No, it was that time where I had to move out and find a place for all of us. So mm. got a one bedroom apartment, my mom moved in, my uh, older brother moved in with me, and I had to be an adult. I think I was like 22, 23, or something like that. Okay. And yeah, so that's when being an adult kicked in for me. And since then, I've been paying my own rent. Mm. Yeah, so I didn't have a choice. And you're just moving from job to job. Yep, job to job. Are Literally you continually job to job. getting fired, or are you leaving? Or 
uh, continuing getting fired because I just couldn't focus. I didn't care mm. for the job. I didn't like it. I never was that. I knew early on that I was like, I don't want to work for nobody else, man. Like, yeah. I'm making you rich. I got to be here when you want me to be here. It just that that math wasn't math for me. Right. It wasn't making any sense to me. There is nothing wrong with having a nine to five job. Let me say that because I know there's going to be some people out there that are saying, <laughs> how, dare, how dare these? So there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five job, but it's just not for me. And I'm sure it's not for a lot of people. I'm out here to, I feel like my goal and the reason I'm on earth and the reason I uh, was able to be born is to share my talent on screen, mm -hmm. share my talent within art, whether it's painting also, um, just just to show different sides of me, different personalities and perform and see myself in a big screen and, and just make my mom proud because um, she had second thoughts on even giving birth to me. It was a doctor mm -hmm. that um, convinced her to have me because he said, your son could be the next president of the United States. Because she was about to get an abortion. Wow. Yeah, she was about to get an abortion. And uh, I had to go through a lot to get, get to where I am right now. So yeah. the doctor had to convince my mom to have me. When I was uh, inside my mom, I was born with umbilical cord wrapped around my throat three times, I think. So oh, I had to wow. beat that. Um, when I was born, I fell down a flight of stairs in my walker. It's like... Damn, it's like I had to go through a lot to get to where I am. I f so that's what pushes me to keep going in the film and television is because of everything that I had to beat in order to get here anyway. Yeah. And this shit started before I was even thought of, you know, and this shit, even when I was in my mom's womb, I had to beat that because she was thinking about getting rid of me because she didn't think my father would be a great father. So, yeah, I just, whew, I just get laid a lot on you. All right. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> fine. <laughs> So yeah, man, that was a lot that I had to go through and uh, trials and tribulations and yeah. So backtracking to, you've uh, lost the house, your parents have lost the house and you're having to go from job to job. Mm -hmm. uh, what ha Are you in Arizona still at that point? Or? Yes, still in Arizona. This, now let's fast forward. So I was working at Safe Light Auto Glass. I got fired from Dish Network. So I'm working at Safe Light Auto Glass in 2010. Um, yeah, I hated that job. Mm. That was one of those jobs that was like, this shit ain't for me. Mm. Um, you know, you get 15 minute breaks at some jobs. This was a call center job. And this was one of those jobs to where I had never been through this. Um, they expect you to be back at your desk at 1458. Uh. So anything after 15 minutes, 1501, you get written up. And I got written up like five times. I was like, this, shit for, this, isn't, this isn't for me. So I stopped caring. So I started going to the job. I still, because I wanted to make some money. So I, I would be late to every, after lunch, after my 15 minute break, 30 minute breaks, I would leave. I didn't give a shit. I was waiting on them to fire me. I was just getting money out of them anyway, getting free health insurance and um, just doing what I needed to do to survive at that time until I found another job that could hold me down for another year. So that's how that went. So you literally are going just from one job to the one next. One job to, to the, the next. next. Just how, how do you even do that on the resume? You, uh, know, like you go to these interviews and you're like, yeah, I got fired from my job, but I'm going to do better this time. <laughs> I never told them why okay. I got fired. I didn't tell okay. them. Well, they can't really ask that question anyway. Yeah. You know, so okay. I was I was just bullshitting my way through it. I was really good at that. All right. I was really good at and Be part awesome. of that, yeah, I was yeah. really good at getting jobs because I'm I was good at talking. I was good at acting like I knew what to do mm. on that job. I had plenty of jobs to where I'd had no experience. Oh, they're gonna come after me to hear this <laughs> chase i had no experience i worked at chase doing mortgage had zero experience i just convinced the manager um that i had the experience and a friend of mine made me a resume showing that saying that shout out to my friend jay uh <laughs> <laughs> the manager or my friend jay made me a resume showing that i had experience so i went to the interview got the job so and then the good news behind that is it did give me experience which led me to one of my uh highest paying jobs which is great uh uh, which led me to getting uh, into auto finance. So I did mortgage and I got into auto finance, which I actually did like. Oh, so that was, was that the longest time you've had a job? That was the longest time I was in a certain field. I did auto finance for about four years. Okay, <laughs> but different companies. Yes. Okay. And so the reason behind that is because not every company doing auto finance is great. So I did it with GM Financial, terrible, terrible fucking company. Um, the uh, the goals and everything was just outrageous. 
you know, they expect you to be there. They would tell you, if I get off at five, they would tell you right at 4.55 that, hey, you need to stay at the end of two hours mm. without notice. And they would expect you to, and if you didn't, you get written up. Mm. So I, I was like, ah, this ain't gonna work for me. I can't, this, oof. It's bringing me, bringing me back to all those, the, the trauma. I, um, I feel like I don't yeah, like to be on no, time anywhere either. Me neither. Um, so that led to one of my f- favorite jobs, uh, uh, Santander Consumer USA. Great job, paid me well. I felt uh, appreciated, you know. I got paid great money, great health insurance. The job was down the street. That was another thing, driving to work, I hated Mm. it. I always tried to find jobs that was near my house. And that was one of them, Santana Consumer USA, so. Did did you have to be on time there? Yes. You did? But Uh I got older. This is, we're fast forward until like 2017. I was a little more mature, so I'm like, I'm gonna be on time. Just because yeah. I actually genuinely kind of like this job. So I was on time. There were some times I wasn't, but I would finagle it. And that's Arizona still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would finagle it and I would <laughs> I would show up, park in carpool, run inside, clock in, run back out, go move my car, park. That way I'm on time. Mm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was stretching it a bit over there. Um, so yeah, that job was cool. I actually really liked that job. And, and one of the main reasons why I just despise having a nine to five job is because they can let you go. In Arizona, it was a right to work state. They can let you go for whatever reason without explanation. Um, but having that job that I actually like and having it taken from me hurt. Oh, so you, you lost that job and that's when it actually, yeah. you're like, oh man, I really like that job. I actually like that job. And you know, at that time I had been doing, I done, had done multiple um, short films, feature films, that was so you're doing acting yeah while you're, yeah that yeah. was funding some of the projects that i was doing some of the projects i was producing and some of the uh the projects i was uh, some of the projects i was just helping out on also just if like friends of mine who's directors and needed some fun I'm, i was making great money mm-hmm. so i'm like bro i got you like mm-hmm. I'll, I'll slide you some ends to you know help you make your film and your project because you expect to be working there for a long time uh, I didn't. I expected to make <laughs> as much money as I can so that way I can survive when I move to L.A. Oh, so in your mind, you already had a plan yes. to move to L.A. You're, yes. you're like, I'm not going to be in this corporate nope. job for too long. Mm-mm, mm-mm, it's just mm-mm. to provide the funding so, until I move to L.A. Exactly. And when was that move? Uh, I moved in 2019 of October. I've been here for three years. And was that because you you were laid off at that other job? No. or um, I No, I had another job after that. So. Okay. <laughs> I had a lot of jobs. Yeah. I was just going to job to job. Um, so when I got fired from Santander, because of someone, um, I started doing Lyft. Oh, mm. Breath of fresh air, not going to lie. It's, it's bullshit with every job. There's bullshit with everything that you're going to do, even acting in film and television. It's bullshit with it that comes with it. You have to find something that you actually like that's worth the bullshit. Lyft at that time was part of it, but at Lyft, I with driving for Lyft, I could make my own schedule. It's kind of I was like, oh shit. Oh yeah. Oh I sh- see. Shit. Yeah. So when I got fired from Santana, I started doing Lyft, and uh, my girlfriend at the time, we right. had been together for about a year and a half. And we, we she had always said like, yo, when are we gonna move to LA? You've been talking about this for so long. Let's do it. And so right right when I got fired from Santana, she was like, so this is this is it. This is your time to go. So let's, let's get one more job, stack mm-hmm. some bread. We're going to go to L.A. So driving Lyft, and I started working at this other job. I, th- I think it was called Zovio, and I was a enrollment advisor or whatnot. Had no experience bullshitting my way through the interview, just like the other jobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got that job. So I'm working both jobs, and, uh, man, I, feel, I, I did that job wrong. I feel bad. <laughs> I felt really bad. I, I you know, health insurance, they give, the, give you that immediately. So I, I made sure I made sure my health was good, make sure I got all the checkups I needed before I moved to LA. Um, gave you tons of PTO off the bat, so I was using PTO mm. whenever I needed to, and just I, was just, I was just doing some trifling shit, but. PTO you know is an incredible side hustle it in is itself. It is an incredible <laughs> side hustle, let me tell you, man. I was getting shit done, <laughs> it was bad. So yeah, doing all that, using the PTO, I used the PTO a lot to go we, you know, we would go to L.A. to try to look for places and stuff. And, yeah, that's how that happened. Uh, found some pla- found a place in Long Beach and put in my two weeks. We both packed our shit. And, and, and at this point, you're like, well, I've had a job 
every year <laughs> for my entire life. So mm -hmm. if I move to LA, I'll be able to figure it out. Is that kind of how it Bingo. Was? Yes. I was confident that I can get a job. Yeah. So I, You've I, been so, hustling your whole life. I mean, I'm a hustler yeah. all day. Um, I was confident I could well, find I, a job. I got to stop you right here, though, and ask, you know, on a set, you got to be on time all the time. How did, how did you feel about that? Oh, that was easy. I loved that. I was in love with film and television, so that was not a problem. Like, so depending on the right job, yes, you'll be on time. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, if I feel validated, if I feel appreciated. Valued. That's probably valued, what, what you're not yes. seeing, yes. right? Like I didn't most feel, of your jobs, you didn't feel like you were no, valued. No. I think a, a lot of people feel like that. Yeah. If I feel valued, I will give you, I will give it back to 110%. you. 110%. 110%. And so... This goes into a loan thing. Um, I got the validation I needed that I made the the right decision to leave the nine to five corporate world when the pandemic happened. Mm, yeah. Um, so when we moved here, we were in Long Beach. I got another job. I was doing auto finance, had the experience. So I said, cool, let me just, um, uh, I got actually, I think I got the job before. No, I got the job after I moved here. So. Got the job. I was driving Lyft at the same time, just making some extra ends, and I was just like, "This is not it." God, this co and this company was like cool, but it was just like strict on being on time. I don't like strict. Yeah, I don't like strict unless like unless said, they treat you with respect. Exactly. They were they were, but it was just like I was just I was already over it at yeah. that point. Like I don't want to work for nobody. Um, so I quit that job and I started driving Lyft full time. Bad timing because this. 2019 October this was probably six months before the pandemic hits yes you see where I was going with that yeah so I quit that job in the beginning of December I'm thinking like cool I'm about to drive Lyft because I was already making good money mm. with Lyft I'm like I can, I'm making thousand a week 1500 a week and I'm like cool I can survive off that and the pandemic happens mm. and March. you know how it was there yeah. was no Lyft rides yeah. there was nothing thank God for Instacart Oh yeah, I got into right. Instacart, and that paid the bills for the entirety of the pandemic. Wow! So I was able to survive through the pandemic doing Instacart, doing deliveries for people who needed groceries. I'm a foodie; I like food, <laughs> so it, it was nothing to me to go grocery shop for someone else and deliver their groceries for them. I learned a lot. You were on schedule. You're on your own schedule. I was on my own schedule. Yeah. Yes, and that um, it, it's such a freeing feeling. You have no idea how rejuvenated I was to 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 start doing lift, get kicked in the nuts when the pandemic happened, to get into Instacart. I just like. Thank God, because a lot of people, a lot of friends of mine who moved to California or they LA, moved back. They moved back. You didn't. No. You pivoted. Where did you find Instacart? I was uh, sitting on the toilet. <laughs> uh, that's where we get off. all our best You're ideas. Right. Yeah. You know, we're always on our phone, and so that's that's the that's right. your phone time is your toilet time. Yeah. Um, so I was yeah. scrolling through uh, Facebook and I was looking at the groups and see if anybody else was going through what I went through with. You're, you're looking at the phone. Yeah. While you're on the toilet. While right. on the toilet. I'm never going to touch your phone. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I was scrolling, uh, just like seeing if, because there's groups on Facebook for yep. uh, uh, Lyft and Instacart or whatever. And I was in the group and they were like, oh my God, there's no money. And then this one girl posted in there, there's always ways to make money. She posted Instacart. I said, what the fuck was that? So I looked at it, said Instacart delivery. I said, let me check it out. So I signed up that day. I think I started that day also. Mm. And I went out to go try to drive Lyft to see if I could get something. Nothing. I made mean like $5 in four hours. I was like, this is terrible. This yeah. is not going to work. Um, so I went home, and they finally uh, approved me to deliver for Instacart, right? And so I'm like, all right, cool. So I didn't know how it worked. So I found a delivery for 50 bucks. So I was like, okay. So I chose it. And I didn't know how it worked. I, it's, it said I had three hours to deliver it or to get it done. So I was like, cool, I'm going to take a nap. Cool. I'm not, I went in no rush. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap. So I took an hour nap, and it said, you have 10 minutes to start the delivery. I said, oh, shit. So I ran out the house, started the delivery, finished it, made it 50 bucks. I was like, oh. Then I got another one, 20 bucks. I was like, ooh. There we go. Saved your life. Yes. Instacart got another one, $30. But yeah. we don't make as much as we used to, to yeah, yeah, during the pandemic. But but all, all in this time, you're, you're in L.A., you're living your dream as an actor. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the big things that you've been doing now? while you've been in LA, Oof. some of your big wins, even from Arizona. Uh, so I did a feature film called, uh, 
and I just forgot the name of it. Oh, the Murder Muse. Uh, so we that one is in post production. So I'm excited about. I'm the lead. Uh, it's a horror film. So I'm excited about that. Um, I did another film called uh, uh, Nocturnal Activities. That's out on YouTube right now. I felt really good about that. I had another one, and this one, this really made me feel like I'm in the right business. Mm. I, I auditioned for this one, and I auditioned like ten times. It was, it was, it was agonizing how yeah. many times I had to audition. And I got the lead role, and I was playing a cop that was going to a mental breakdown. It was for uh, uh, Axon, Axon, which is the company that makes the uh, cameras for police officers. Okay, I was thinking deodorant, so I'm wrong. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> And so I did the promotional video for them to bring awareness of mental, uh, mental, mental abuse and uh, and the mental issues that police officers go through. So I played a cop that, that had mental issues and all that. So that what that that's what that was about. The audition process was crazy. I auditioned, like I said, like nine, right. ten times. And when I landed, it was just like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sure. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is the this is the career path I want to go down. It's just, the, it was so motivating that I booked that role because it was, I didn't think I was going to get it. I think all actors can attest to that, that you get these auditions, yeah. you're like, I'm not going to get this one, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not going to get this one. But there's some of them you get and you're like, I got this one. Yeah. And you don't get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this one, I was just like, I'm not going to get it. But I know, I knew I could pull it off because uh, I've always felt like I had the, the, the drama part of it was just, I've always been dramatic. As you can see, I'm pretty dramatic. <laughs> and uh, and they wanted somebody that could cry in queue, and I, and I did it. And I was just like, okay, well, let's, let's Can you cry right now? Not right now. Okay. I'm, too <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a good mood right All now. Right. Um, so I did that, and I got the role, and it, and it came out so good. Like, everybody that watched it, they're like, that was your best performance. Mm. That was your best performance. And I was like, damn. And so that was one of my big wins during the pandemic. Right. Um, I'm very proud of that. Um, it's called Two Families. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Really so, good. so if you have, you know how much rejection there is in the acting game and like you've been in this for about a decade or more. Yeah. Uh, what advice do you have to people that are, that are like, uh, I think I just want to go back to a corporate nine to five. I, I just want to give up on this stuff. What keeps you going every day? Uh, what keeps me going is the fact that I could have easily not been here. My mom could have decided to abort me. Wow. I could have choked in her womb when the umbilical cord was right. I could have died in her womb. I overcame so many obstacles. It's just like, you better not quit. That's why I keep going. Because I literally could not be, I could just easily not have been here right now. Um, the accidents I've been in, car accidents with my mom, I could have died in those. Um, so you're living one life and you gotta live it. Yeah. All right. Exactly. You, you gotta just take advantage of the opportunities and the fact that I'm still here. I made it through the pandemic. It's another one. I made it through the pandemic without having to go back to get a nine to five job. Yeah. If there's a will, there's a way. I'm a hustler. I'm always about finding multiple sources of income to survive. Even when I was in Phoenix, you know, I would if I needed a job, I'm gonna get a job. That's mm -hmm. that's not a problem for me. Even right now, if I really wanted to go get a nine to five job, I'm very confident I can land one. Right. But right now, I don't need one, and I don't, I don't ever want to go back. Cause just because what happened at those jobs, especially the jobs I like, how I was treated, and when I was let go, it really hurt. It really hurt, especially when I actually liked the job. For mm -hmm. it to be taken from under my feet really pissed me off and put me in a dark place. It was just like, damn, I actually like this job, and you guys going to let me go? Yeah, and so that, that one hurt. Uh, those jobs hurt the last couple jobs uh, before I moved to out to LA. Um, but I think everything happens for a reason. Um, me moving out here further let me know um, that I'm in the right career. I'm on the right career path, and I'm doing the right thing. I have the the drive. I have the motivation. Um, do I always have motivation? No. I'm not going to say act like everything is just like peachy. No, yeah. no, no, no. I have my days when I'm burnt out. I went through the burnt out syndrome throughout most of this summer where it was just like fuck man some of these auditions I don't feel like doing because I feel like they're wasting my time but I did them and then sometimes you get this I got this this clicker just like ooh, let me remind myself I'm an actor in LA and I'm surviving Oof. Yeah. you know what I mean yeah. you know and yeah. that 
got me back on track. That All got right, me right well, back on track. Well, yeah. I think that's a good note to end on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I always say at the end of this podcast, I believe in you and you should believe in yourself. You really should believe in yourself. That's the number one thing. If you don't believe in yourself, then please don't put don't don't do this to yourself because this is suicide. Yeah, it really is. I was just reading a book, and they were saying uh, anyone pursuing this type of career is insane, and they're right because there's so much damn rejection. You have to be a really strong-minded person to deal with all this rejection that we go through. Right. And if you're not ready for that, then please don't do this to yourself. Yeah. Because it'll, it'll fuck your head up. Good words. Well, yeah. uh, thanks so much for being on the podcast no today, problem at Alan. All. It was a great time. Glad I was able to tell the story. And you're wonderful. No, oh, you're wonderful too, you're man. Wonderful. I love your voice. It's out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. Uh, I love your voice too. Thank it was you. a pleasure meeting you. You as well, man. All right. Thank you.